Prejesus, praise the King of Kings, and the Lord of Lords. My dear friends, Jesus Christ is Lord. God sent us here to preach to you about Jesus Christ. Hoping that some of you will give your life to Jesus Christ today. Today's message is kindness. Kindness is a rare commodity in this society, in this world in which we live. We'll never get to see enough of kindness or hear enough about kindness in the news. Now, we are living in a kind of society where most people are not kind to one another. And so my message for you this man is this. Are you a kind person? You see? I want you to listen to what the Bible says. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4, love is kind. That's what the Bible says. Love is kind. Without love, you cannot be kind. No love, no kindness. No Jesus in your life, you don't have godly kindness. And I'm preaching to you today. And the Bible says in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 to 23, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, and worship, kindness. Can I help you, brother? So, my dear friends, we are talking about kindness. And the Bible says the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, Passion, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things, there is no law. Now, no any government in the world is going to pass a law telling us to be kind to one another. The scripture says the fruit of the Spirit is kindness. You see, if you don't have the Spirit of God in you, you don't have God kind of kindness that I'm preaching to you today. Holy Spirit of God is kind. The kindness is an attribute of God. The reason, the reason we should practice kindness is because God is kind to us. Titus chapter 3, verse 3 to 5. The Bible says, at one time, we are too foolish disobedient, deceived, and enslaved by all kinds of passions and pressures. We live in malice and envy, being hated and hating one another. Now watch this. But when kindness and love of God, our Savior, appear, He saved us. And not because of the righteous things that we have done, but because of His mercy. Friends, God has been so kind to us and He saved us. God bless you, sister. How are you today? I'm all right. I'm oh, sorry. I pray that God give you the grace today. And I pray that God bless you. And I pray that God heal you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen, sister. Amen. Have a blessed day. Thank you. Amen. See you later. Amen. So, my dear friends, we are talking about kindness. Kindness is the fruit of the Spirit. And God saved us because God has so kind to us. And because of His mercy, we are not consumed. God is kind to you. And you must be kind to one another. The fruit of the Spirit is kindness. I'm talking about kindness. We must learn and we should be kind to one another because the Bible says God is kind. When Jesus Christ appeared, he showed us kindness. Christ died on the cross of Calvary, showed us kindness. Hate was destroyed on the cross of Calvary. Malice was destroyed on the cross of Calvary. 
Envy was destroyed on the cross of Calvary. Wickedness was destroyed on the cross of Calvary. The cross represents kindness that Jesus Christ died for our sin. And yet he says, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they are doing. If you don't have kindness in you, it's because you don't know God. You don't know what you are doing. Because the message today is kindness. When you know Jesus Christ, look at his life. You see, he was a kind person. He was kind. The Bible says everywhere he go, he was doing good. Jesus Christ is saying, look, chapter 6, verse 35 to 36. But love your enemies. Do good to them and let to them without expecting to get anything back. Then your reward will be great and you will be sons of the Most High. Because he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful just as your father is merciful. That's what Jesus Christ is saying. He said be kind to your enemies. Be kind to the ungrateful. Be kind to the wicked. Because God is a merciful God. And then he says, you do that because you are the sons of your father. So friends, love and kindness are woven together. You cannot have kindness without love. And you cannot have love without being kind. I want you to see the contrast between the fruit of the spirit and the words of the flesh. These are the life size of those who are not spirit filled. Galatians chapter 5, verse 19 to 21. The Bible says, Now the words of the flesh are evident. That means you can easily see it. It's so obvious. Number one, sexual immorality, impurity, sexuality, adultery, surgery, enmity, strife. Jealousy, fit of anger, rivals, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like this. Just as if you think Apostle Paul left everything out. He said things like this. You can add any list in it. And then he says, I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. And so today, if you're not a kind person, you cannot inherit the kingdom of God. The Bible says the fruit of the Spirit is what? Kindness. So we can see very clearly the contrast between a sinful lifestyle that leads to death and the spirit-filled lifestyle that leads to eternal life. Now as Christians, we should show kindness. Kindness is the person of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. If you call yourself a Christian, if you don't show kindness, my say to you today, you are not a Christian, until you show kindness. Now, it is impossible to call yourself a Christian without showing kindness. Galatians 5, verse 22 says, the fruit of the Spirit is love. That's first. And then kindness. The fruit of the Spirit is how we should live our life. You see, love begets kindness. Without love, without love in our heart, we don't have kindness. That's right. Without love, you don't know what kindness is until you find love. And the love I'm preaching to you today is Jesus Christ, because Jesus Christ is love. And God commands us that we should love one another just as we love ourselves. So you see, my dear friends, do you want to be kind? Receive Jesus Christ into your heart and as your Lord and as your Savior. You have that love of God and then you can show kindness. So friends, God's kindness to us flow out of his great love for us. And we should let the same great love to flow to others. Galatians chapter 3, Verse 12 says, Therefore, I like that word, therefore. Therefore, as God's choosing people, holy and dearly love, 
clothe yourself with compassion, now worship, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Verse 13, bear with each other and forgive another. If you, if any of you have grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. And all these things, virtues, put on love, which binds all things together in a perfect unity. Now, love is what binds kindness. That's why I say to you, if you don't have the love of God, there's no way that you can be kind until, until my dear friend, you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and as your Savior. A Christian lifestyle is a life of love. Love binds the fruit together. Without love, we cannot consider it be a good fruit. Without love, we cannot be kind. Now, a Christian has a spirit and that lives in his body and the body that someday will die, but the spirit will live forever. Then you receive a body that is imperishable. That's why it is mandatory that the Christian live a life being led by the spirit and not by the flesh. And so God's great kindness to us is through his salvation for us. Mandate our kindness to one another. Ephesians chapter 4, chapter 2, verse 4 to 7. Hello, how are you? Do you know Jesus? Yes. Sorry? It's free. Yeah, anything you want is free. Do you need the Bible? So you can have it here. Yeah. Uh, have you give your life to Jesus Christ, brother? Do you know who Jesus Christ is? Come here. What is your name? Sorry? Andrew. I'll pray for you, Andrew. Okay. Say Jesus. Say Jesus. Come into my heart. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Be my Lord. I believe you died for my sins. You died for my sins. You rose again. You are in heaven. When I die, I'll be with you. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, Brother Andrew. Have a blessed day. Amen. So, my dear friends, I'm talking about kindness. Ephesians chapter 2. Verse 4 to 7, because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ. Even when we are dead in transgressions, it is by his grace you are saved. And God risen us with Christ and sit us with him in heaven reigns in Christ Jesus. In order that the coming age, he might show incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. Friends, Jesus Christ is our kindness. Amen? And that's what I'm telling you today. If you don't have Jesus Christ as your Lord, as your Savior, you don't know what kindness is. In Matthew chapter 25, God show us the kindness of Jesus Christ and we should serve Jesus Christ the same way Jesus Christ has revealed himself to us. You see, we are sheep and we are not goats. We are saints and we are not ants. Amen? So today, I want you to see the way you treat one another. Because that will determine what kind of fruit you're bearing. Every tree must be known by its fruit. That's right. It's because God is making the sheep and goats. Separate them, dividing them according to what he says. The one who have Christ in him display the character of Christ. And that is what kindness. Kindness reveals a life that is transformed by Christ. Kindness reveals the love of God in our heart. And kindness reveals the character of Christ in our lives. And now, he said, Brother Kinsley, I do the act of kindness. Did you, my dear friend? You see, we got it backwards. Because the kindness I'm preaching to you today is godly kindness. Be made new by Christ Jesus. His sheep does kind acts. The things that do, the things that we do reveal who we are. 
The Lord says, when I see kindness, I will know that are my sheep. Are you the sheep? Or are you a goat? Because if you are sheep, you live a life of kindness that displays who you are. What you have inside is what you display outside. God is not interested about your outward appearance. Your heart is what God is looking to. If you're a kind person, God knows in your heart and God knows who you are. So if you are the sheep of God, we must like, act like him, Jesus Christ. And just Christ, when he returns, he will not commend us, he will not recommend us based on what we know, rather than based on what we do. It's not about your fame. It's not about your fortune. It's not about the kindness that I've shown to one another. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 32 says, Be kind, be kind to one another. Tender-hearted, forgive one another as God in Christ's sake have forgive you. That's why right. God says be kind. It is a command. God's telling you today, be kind to one another. And forgive one another just as God in Christ have forgive you. If you have hate in your heart, if your heart is headquarter for hatred, you don't know God. If your region tells you to hate your neighbor, that region is from the devil. Devil don't love you. They come to steal and kill and destroy. God is telling you today, be kind. Be kind to one another. Strive for London, UK. Be kind to one another. Why? Because God has shown us kindness. And it caused God a lot to show us kindness on the cross of Calvary. Jesus Christ display everything that you need to know about kindness. We don't deserve kindness of God. And yet, God provides for us free out of the goodness of his heart that God showed us kindness. So my dear friends, kindness is a serious business with God. God does not take lightly. If you are not kind to one another, you must be kind to one another. Because the Bible says, be kind to one another. I told my children the same thing, be kind to one another. I don't care how many A's they get in the school. You must be kind. Because the Bible says, the fruit of the Spirit is kind. They can get all the whole A's, which my son always have. But I'm so happy when the teacher told me that he's a kind person, he's a kind boy. That gives me joy because your education will go, your money will go, your health will go, your house will go. But if you're not kind, if you're not kind, my dear friend, you cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So you must be kind. That's what God says. Be kind to one another. So today, learn how to be kind. The word of God is real and clear today, my dear friend. So to neglect to be kind to one another, what does that mean? That means we subject ourselves to the wrath of God. Do you want to avoid the wrath of God? Be kind then. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgive one another, just as God has forgiven you for Christ's sake. Right now, take this wonderful opportunity. To invite Jesus Christ into your heart. Without the Holy Spirit of God, it is impossible for you to have godly kindness I'm preaching to you today. Ask Jesus to forgive your sin. Ask Jesus Christ to give you his spirit. Ask Jesus Christ to restore you. And now believe it by faith. Believe that your sins are forgiven. Believe that God has restored you. Believe that Jesus Christ died and rose again for you. Believe what the Bible says. Believe in him and you shall be saved. Be kind. Be kind to another. Let us be kind, my dear friends. Amen. Bless in the mighty name of Jesus. My dear friends, Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Jesus Christ is Lord.